I thought I would do something fun. Uh, actually, I mean, pretty much all my physics, physics videos are fun, I think. So, but I was looking through my old files and I found some really old tests that I wrote. Uh, and I know that I have even older tests than this, but I want to work through these tests. Uh, and I'm going to do one question per video just to see what happens. Because I think that I have changed. This is, this is a test from 2007. And I know I have moments that are much older than that, but this is the first one I found. I know that I've changed in the way that I both think about physics, in the way that I think about assessing physics, um, and that are the way that I write questions. And so it's going to be kind of interesting to see. I haven't really looked at these. I just printed it out. I haven't looked at it. I'm going to solve it from scratch. And I, I will use Python as my calculator if I want to because, I mean, no one can solve me. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see what happens. And, and maybe you'll find it useful, maybe not. So let's just jump right to it. Uh, let's look at this first question. It's kind of hard to read, so I will read it to you. Let's see. I'll have to turn that off too. Okay. So here we are. This is uh, physics 191. You can see that right there. This is our algebra-based uh, first semester physics course, you know, mechanics type, type of stuff. Uh, here's where you'd put your name. So let's put that part right there. And my W number, that's your student ID number. Okay. Uh, show all work and clearly indicate your answers. Full credit will only be given for full answers. I started doing that a long time ago. I thought that was something newer that I'd, I'd say full credit for full answers. Uh, so 2007, what's that, uh, 10, 11, 14 years ago? Four, yeah, 14 years ago. Hmm. Okay. Eight questions, I will grade seven of them. This is the final exam. Um, that seems like a lot. So we give final exams are uh, two hours. Um, so seven questions and two hours. I would probably do less than that right now, uh, mainly because... Um, I don't want to grade that much. And I want to make sure they have plenty of time. I think I, if I do like, if they answer only five questions, I could probably fully evaluate what they understand. Now, let's jump to it though. A 10 kilogram crate is on the floor. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the floor and the crate is 0.3. If someone pushes horizontally on the crate with a force of 60 newtons, period. That's weird. If someone pushes on the, then maybe that should be, how about just someone pushes on a crate horizontally with a force of 6 newtons. If the force is applied over a distance of 3 meters and the crate starts at rest, what will, speed be, what, will, what will the speed of the crate be after the 3 meters? Okay, so let's draw a picture. So here's my floor. And then here is the crate. And there's a 60 newton force. And it did say horizontal. Pushes horizontally. It didn't say it's on the floor. I mean, I think it's safe to assume the floor is horizontal. So then we have a gravitational force, mg. Uh, we have a normal force, fn. And then there's a friction force pushing backwards, ff. Uh, and so then it's going to move all the way over here, a distance of 3 meters. And then how fast will it be going? So v, v0 equals 0, v, let's call it v1, v2 equals question mark. Okay, I'm going to try to do this in the space provided, but let's see if I don't, then I don't, that's fine. Um, and that's three meters. So the, the first thing I'm looking at here is how do I solve this problem? I'm, the first thing that pops to mind since I'm dealing with a final speed and a distance is the work energy principle, but I also know that I got mad at, at the internet for doing the work done by friction, but I'm not doing the work done by friction. Am I? Am I doing the work done by friction? Okay, I can do this. If I assume a point particle system, PPS, of the block, I won't cheat. In the point particle system, so you can't do the work done by friction because the contact point is, is not constant, right? Um, it, and you don't know what that contact point is. You don't know actually how far the, the frictional force is applied because of this uh, slipping system going on. But if I assume a point particle system, that means that, I, that the particle can't have any energy except for kinetic energy. And it means that, um, you, see how, you see how much trouble I'm getting myself into uh, by writing a question like this? 
and thinking about it more complicated than I need to. So let's just let's just use a point particle system. So that says the work is the change in energy, which is the change in kinetic energy. And then the work is going to be the work done by all the forces added up because there is no potential energy. So I'm going to have, uh, and this is going to be the equivalent of the work is the net force dot the displacement. And so the displacement, let's go ahead and write this out as a vector. I probably wouldn't want it, students to do it this way. But let's say delta R is the vector 3, 0, 0 meters. And then the net force, I'm running out of room already here. I feel kind of cramped. The net force, uh, I have, since it doesn't accelerate up or down, the gravitational force is equal to the normal force. So, and I need that magnitude because the frictional force is equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force, which is going to be the magnitude, which is going to be the coefficient of friction times mg. And then so the net force is going to be equal to the vector 60 minus mu k mg 0, 0. Now when I take the dot product between these two, the only thing that survives is the x term. So I get 3 times 60 minus mu k mg, and that's going to be the change in kinetic energy, which is 1 half mv2 squared minus 0. The initial velocity is 0. The mat, that mass does not cancel, which is fine. I have, I have the, the mass listed there. So I can solve for the final velocity. I get v2 equals uh, the square root of 2 times 3 times 60 minus mu k m g, all of that divided by m. Okay, let's put that into Python, uh, which I already have up right here. Okay, so let's just put in my values. I'm just using this as a calculator. Uh, I can say m equals 10, g equals, I've already, I've already uh, used g as the scalar value, so it's just 9.8. Uh, mu equals 0.3. Uh, dr is 3, fp equals 60, that's the push force. Um, looking over here, so uh, these, I mean, let's just put v2 equals square root of 2 times dr times fp minus mu times g times m, m, mu, mg, all of that divided by m, and let's print that, print v2 equals v2 meters per second, run it. I get 4.28 meters per second. Um, so let's just evaluate this as a, as a test problem. As a test problem, is it a good problem? I mean, it, it's okay. And in fact, you could solve this more than one way, right? I could solve the net force, use a kinematic equation for the, uh, with the, there's a kinematic equation that doesn't have time in it, or I could use the kinematic equations and use the average velocity, which I have to find. Uh, you can make it more complicated than you want. But, but I think that's probably what I wanted the students to do is to use the word. Actually, that is what's good about this question is that there are multiple ways to solve it. That's good. Um, so there, I did it. Uh, let's go into the next problem, which will be the next video. So I'll put these all on a playlist for you.